everybody, it's Rain. Today, we're gonna be spinning a little sample of this. I'm pretty sure it is a blend of merino, wool, and silk. I just looked it up and I believe it may be 80% merino wool and 20% mulberry silk. I know for a fact it has mulberry silk in it, but I found one pretty similar to this and it says it's 80% merino wool top and 20% mulberry silk top. So I'm going to open that up and show you guys a closer look at it. I'm not going to draft it any, I'm just going to kind of open the fibers up a bit and just start spinning it. It is very soft and silky, very shiny with that silk in it and I'm worried it might be a little bit slippery to spin, but that's what this new series is about. We're just going to get some fiber and spin it and see what happens. So I think that's enough looking at this fiber. And I'm just gonna let you know that I got it from like a millions type deal and it's just like samples of fiber. I don't remember where I got it from and I don't remember what blends they are, but I'm gonna just go ahead and show you this one and we're gonna go for it today. And I've got a bunch more later on. We're gonna keep this series going if you guys like it and let's get started. So I just went through and opened up the fiber a bit to kind of widen it out a little bit. That'll make it spinning a little bit easier for me. And I'm going to see which end drafts the easiest. I pulled a little bit from this end just to kind of pre-draft it a bit. As you can see, I was working a little bit hard to draft from. And then this end definitely drafted just a tiny bit easier. So I'm going to tie like a very loose knot in the other end to make sure I don't draft from that end and go ahead and start spinning from the other end. And we're going to weigh it just to get a feel for how much we have, 44.6 grams. So that means we can spin all of this and then I'm going to ply it with something else and make it into a beautiful one of a kind of yarn. And I think that's going to be really fun. So I went ahead and turned my wheel on and made sure that it was set in the Z position for my singles. Got my leader going in the right way so it would be wrapping correctly. Pulled it to the back, threaded my leader through, and I'm going to go ahead and open it. And one little tip. I learned later on that if you tie your knot in your leader thread a little bit to the side, it will prevent your fiber from getting caught in that knot at the end. So I forgot to do that on this leader, so I just went ahead and threaded my fiber in a little off to the side, just like so, so it doesn't get caught in that knot. Then I went ahead and hit my foot pedal and started my wheel. Just kind of bring that knot to the side a little bit, get it out of the way, and start drafting. And, and initially it was a little bit slippery, a little bit hard to get going. I have spun merino wool and mulberry silk blended together before, but it was a hand combed blend, and it was more of a even blend. It wasn't like chunks of mulberry silk in with the wool, like one of these blends you get from the big meals. It was all one mix and it was one solid color. You couldn't really tell where the merino started and where the silk ended. It was all blended together. Here's a little bit better of an angle. I got lots of different camera angles while I spun this. I know that that keeps it interesting and hopefully keeps you guys watching so that you can see the fibers coming out as I draft them. If I could go back and re-spin this, I would definitely draft it out a bit as I go because that did make it a little bit easier because the staple length in this fiber was quite long. I believe it was around four or five inches, which is normal for mulberry silk. So I went ahead and stopped before I got any further and did a little bit of a plyback test just to see what we're working with here. I know I'm going to ply this with another fiber, but I still want to see about how thick it's going to be and how it's going to look and it is beautiful. The shine and the silkiness doesn't come through on video. I tried to get it at the end, but you can't really see it here. It is so shiny and silky. I was so giddy while I was spinning this. It was really fun. 
And right here, I had my first break. So um, what you have to do is, you do have to pre-draft it a bit. Like as you can see down here at the bottom, it kind of starts to get a little bunched up deeper in the fiber. So I kind of just fluffed it out a little bit and laid them together. And you do have to lay it quite back into the fiber to get it to really keep that twist and not just slip right out. So you do have to use a little bit of a technique with this. You gotta make sure you remember that long staple and keep it back in the fiber to keep the twist pulling out smoothly. And here is a much clearer angle of a break and how far back I had to add it. And you do wanna keep it untwisted. So as you can see, I pulled that out and I am going to untwist those fibers at the top, just like so, because you want it to feed in evenly with your blend just like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and start my wheel it's spinning now and it's gonna start pulling in more fiber so you do have to lay it quite far back in there and I really really like this footage here you can see the shine in it and you can see how it is actually drafting out now my left hand like I said before in other videos I use it as a break to kind of keep the fiber from pulling too much at a time or not pulling enough you do have to keep that a little further back and as you can see you'll see me keep going up at the end to make sure that it doesn't pull out too thick of a piece of fiber and then I will ease it back down and I do want to talk about this part right here as you can see how it gets bunched up if you don't pre-draft it look at those fibers see how it's getting curled up on itself that can become a problem especially when you're doing like a worsted style spin this is just semi worsted because I'm letting some of the fibers kind of fold in and around on themselves so you have to stop and pre-draft it back out so that all the fibers are in the correct alignment for a combed top and the only reason that happens is because you're going across the top of the braid since it's not pre-drafted and you're getting like a chunk of white and that white wants to keep pulling more of that white out so it'll kind of get a little bunched up down at the bottom like the blue will start to bend around it and so you just want to try to keep it evenly going across the braid i haven't quite mastered that yet or you just want to pre-draft it just a bit to make it easier but check this footage out i really really love this footage you can see i put a black background down under my spinning so that you could really see the fibers coming out individually and i also want to say this fiber will stick to you as you can see i've been doing a lot of knitting lately and i have a bad habit of pushing my needle down with my pointer finger on my right hand so i had a little piece of skin that was driving me crazy if your hands are dry and rough like mine, it's going to be a pain in the butt while you're spinning, but it's not impossible to spin with. You can use a bit of lotion, but I usually don't because I don't like to get any kind of oils back into my fiber at all. Anyway, here comes another piece of footage I wanted to show you. So what happens if it gets a little too thick, as you can see like this? You know, all you want to do is untwist it at the top, untwist it a little at the bottom, and just start to pull very gently. And then just keep working your way up, untwisting until it gets to the thinness that you want. Just let that twist come back in and simple, done. It's not as thick as it was before. So here is a shot of my bobbin and how beautiful and silky it is. You can kind of see the shine coming through a little bit here. I tried to kind of work the light a little bit so you could see a little bit of that shine. And this was how far I got on my first day of spinning. I did have to spin this over the course of two days. I have two toddlers that take almost all of my attention. So this was at the end of the first day. It is absolutely gorgeous. Right here was the second day. I really liked this clip where you could see the fibers coming out. It is sped up a little bit, just so you know. But it was a dream to spin. It did take a little bit of a learning curve to get there. But I definitely recommend trying some of these blends if you've never tried them before. Just jump in. Give it a go. Don't be scared. And right here is how easy it is after it was pre-drafted. I pre-drafted probably about the last 10 inches or so. Just so you could see how it was going. 
and if you look it is much easier you don't have to work it across the braid like I was doing in the beginning and later on as we go I have a lot more of these samples of all kinds of different wools and all kinds of different blends and we're going to try a bunch of different techniques one of the ones I'm really excited about is spinning from the fold to see what a difference we get. We're going to spin half from the fold and half just regular and we're going to compare those in a future video. I've got another dye with rain video in the works. It's already filmed. I just have to edit it and get it ready to go through the voiceover, all that good stuff. And I also have a finished object haul. If you want to see what I did with that gradient gray and my husband's sock yarn, keep watching because I have those finished and we're going to be filming a finished object haul. I'm thinking about doing that as like a bonus video one week so that's not the only video you get. You still get some other content as well but definitely subscribe and hit that like button if you enjoy my content. And here is our finished bobbin. This is the full 44 grams on the bobbin. I tried to adjust the lighting for you as good as I could so that you could see that shine like if you were in person. It's really hard to show on camera, but it is so shiny and it's really soft and silky feeling. You gotta let me know what I should ply with this. Should I use a white, a black, a gray, a blue? What should I ply with it? And should I do a thicker yarn to make kind of an art style yarn? Or should I try to keep it all the same length and kind of keep it even? Let me know in the comments below because I'm still unsure about what I want to ply this with. I hope you guys have enjoyed the first episode of our new series, Let's Spin This. And I will see you guys next week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.